Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at synchronization. We will be looking at how synchronization is taking place in a manual transmission gearbox. Well, when we look at the main component of the synchronization assembly, we have the output shaft, which is going to the propeller shaft. This is the output shaft. And we have the speed gear that is riding free on the speed on the output shaft. This is riding free on the output shaft. And we have a synchronizer ring. This is a synchronizer ring that has a friction material. For example, this one has a friction material on the inside. There are also synchronizer rings which have friction material on the outside. Now the idea is this is connected to the counter shaft. This gear is always in constant mesh with the counter shaft. But as you can see, it is supported by a roller bearing, so it is riding on the output shaft. Now, in order to connect power flow from this gear to the output shaft, the speed of this shaft and the speed of this gear, it has to be synchronized. So this is why we need the synchronizer ring. The synchronizer ring will create a friction that will cause this output shaft to have a similar speed with the speed gear. For example, look, this is how it is assembled. We have a synchronizer ring connected to this conical surface. We have a friction surface matching that. And then we have the hub that is connected to the output shaft. It has a spline on, on this side. We have a spline on the internal. This internal spline is to be connected to the output shaft spline. So it will be connected in such a fashion. Now, this hub is always rotating with the shaft, with the speed of this output shaft. Now the synchronizer ring is running in such a manner. So for the synchronizer ring to travel with this, we have keys. This kind of keys are there. We have three keys that will be inserted in such a manner. And there is a spring piston ring looking spring that will keep the keys in such a position. So this key will always be held up, pushed up. So as you can see, when the output shaft is rotating, the hub will move with the output shaft and the keys, they will take this synchronizer ring and make it move with the speed of the hub. So synchronizer rings are always traveling with the speed of the hub because they are connected to the hub with these keys. For example, here you can see the keys. Right here we have a key. Look, this key is spring-loaded. When I push it down, it goes down. It can be pressed down. See? It can move down. So this is a spring-loaded key. We have a piston ring-looking spring that is pressing this key up. Now because of this key, this synchronizer ring is, it has a slight freedom of motion. It has a slight freedom because it will be riding in this groove. The key will be riding in this groove. The key will be riding in this groove. There is a slight freedom for the synchronizer ring to travel. But it will always travel with the hub because the key is taking it in such a manner. It is always traveling. Now let's say, <clears throat> let's say for example, this speed gear is running faster than the output shaft. So when gear is selected, what will happen is, when gear is selected, when the synchronizer assembly, when gear is selected, what will happen is, let's say there is a key here. There is a key. We have three of them. For this specific case, we have three of them. And we have this sleeve. We have this sleeve that has internal shift T's. We call them shift dogs. Shift dogs will be riding on the hub. Now when gear is selected, when, they, when this is pushed outwards, when this is pushed this way, the rings, the synchronizer rings, will be pressed onto the friction surface of the speed gear. That is done by this key. 
See, the key will be located in here. This key will be placed in such a fashion. This, will, this key will be placed in such a fashion. So what happens is when gear is selected and when this is, when this is moving to one side, it will first push the key. The key will be pushed to the speed gear side. What will that do? That will press this friction surface. This friction disc will be pressed onto the speed gear. Now let's say if this is running faster than the output shaft, what will happen is the friction of the synchronizer ring will slow it down until the speed of this speed gear and the output shaft will be equal. Once the two speeds are equal, we say the speed is synchronized. It means they have similar speed. Now look, once they have similar speed, now we are pressing this sleeve to move to this side. Once the speed is similar, it will insert itself in such a manner. Some portion of this sleeve will be meshed to the hub, to this hub. Part of the teeth will be meshed to the speed gear. See? Now, this shift sleeve is joining the hub and the speed gear. Now, the speed gear, which was running free on the shaft, is no more free because it is connected to the hub, the hub which is connected to the shaft by the selector sleeve. So this way, the speed from this gear will be connected to the output shaft. Now, because this gear is selected, the vehicle will be running with this speed gear. Let me show you how that is taking place right on this one. Look, this speed gear is running free. It's running free on the output shaft. This synchronizer, it only has a slight motion. Look, it is only moving partly. Only partly. Now, when gear is selected, this sleeve will be sliding to this side. What will happen as it, as it is sliding, the keys, they will be pressing this synchronizer ring onto the speed gear. Look, now it is running free. Now it is running free, it's running free. Look how it is happening. Now it is running free, then it will engage in such a fashion. So this is how synchronization is happening. When the sleeve is moved to this side in order to select this speed, when it is moved to this side, will press the key, the key will force the synchronizer ring to the speed gear, friction will take place. Once the friction has equalized the speed of this speed gear and the hub, then the synchronizer ring will become free again. When it is pressed and when there is friction, this will not be free, the synchronizer ring will not be free. So the sleeve cannot distort this and engage. Once the speed of this assembly and the speed of this gear will become equalized, now the synchronizer ring will be free, such a manner. But when there is a speed difference, when there is friction between those two, it will not be free. Now when the speed is free, look what is happening to the synchronizer ring as I push it. Look, look at, just have a look at the synchronizer ring. Look, see? It will be aligned, aligning itself with the help of this chamfer on this teeth of the shift dog. There is a chamfer. If you look at here, if you look at here, there is a chamfer. This is not a flat surface. It has a chamfer. Look at here. It is a triangular chamfer is there. Similarly, on the synchronizer ring, on the synchronizer ring, there is a chamfer. I don't know if it is visible or not. There is a chamfer here. Look. It is also a triangular shaped chamfer is here. Now, when the hub is in contact with this inclined surface, 
it will slightly move to this one side and then it will slide itself and engage. So due to this chamfer, once the speed is equalized, the friction, once the friction is gone, this will be free to move itself slightly to the left and right. So the control sleeve, I mean the shift sleeve will distort this and insert itself in such a manner. Then speed will be selected in such a manner. So this is how friction is synchronizing the speed. So we have three steps. So the first step is when this is moved to this side, what will happen is the shift dog will press this key and move it slightly to this side. And that will press this synchronizer ring onto the friction surface of the speed gear. So we have friction. Once the friction is over and we have a equivalent speed, when, once the speed is equalized, the synchronizer ring will be free again. Once the synchronizer ring is free, this will slide further, align itself, and all the teeth will be meshed in such a way. As you can see on the speed gear, the gear on the speed gear is also, it has a chamfer. If we take it out and uh, look at it closely, look, there is a chamfer. The gear is not a straight cut. Rather, there is a chamfer. Have a look. There is a chamfer. A triangular shaped chamfer is there. So this chamfer is the one that will allow the shift dogs to slide freely. Once the speed is equal, this can slightly move to the left and right so that the shift dog T's can insert itself in here, in between. So this is how synchronization is taking place. So this is how synchronization is happening in a manual transmission and this is how gear is selected. Well, dear viewers, this is all we have for you in this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.